repairing a 2 inch scale foul attraction engine part 6, repacking the piston rod gland, adjusting the small end bearing and shimming the crosshead slipper. This traction engine, mechanically speaking, is not in very good condition, it's extremely worn. I'm working my way through the engine, putting the various problems right. And here's a problem, the gland is blowing. You can see that by the oil bubbling. The entire engine's starting to sound a lot better since I fixed the flywheel problem. And the big end is OK, but the small end and the crosshead are not OK. This wear is due to insufficient lubrication or using the wrong type of oil. I'm starting today's job by knocking out the taper pin that holds the crosshead to the piston rod. I'm tapping a piece of brass rod very gently and notice that the crosshead is fully in towards the cylinder. Once the pin was loose, it was an easy job to extract it, just using a pair of pliers. I can clearly see, as I'm sure you can, there are signs of impact damage around this area of the crosshead. And this is nothing to do with me, it's the way I received the engine. In this clip I'm holding the taper wedge between my finger and thumb. And now the crosshead is completely free from the piston rod. Because of the amount of wear on the crosshead slippers, which has allowed the crosshead to move up and down, the actual gland nut, or the gland flange in this case, is also worn, but that's not an issue, because this part only holds the gland packing in place. What I need to do is undo the two nuts holding this part in position, then I'll be able to remove the part and pack the gland. Then, after I've added some gland packing and put it all back together, I don't think the piston rod's going to leak, and also the piston rod will be supported by the gland if it's correctly adjusted. Here, using a screwdriver, I'm levering off the fitting. I don't need to apply much pressure here, it came away quite easily. The next part of the job is to find out what the condition of the graphited yarn is like inside the stuffing gland. And I'm currently poking about in there using a bent piece of silver solder. By the feel of it, the graphited yarn is OK. It's quite soft. If the graphited yarn is really hard, then that's a problem because it will need replacing, but this isn't. What I'm about to do is add a little bit more packing in the form of some Teflon coated yarn. And here you see me putting it in position around the piston rod. Once I'd done that, I thought it would be a good idea to fit an O-ring as well. This is a real belt and braces approach. This silicone O-ring is a special steam grade silicone O-ring. Once a piece of Teflon coated yarn and the O-ring were in place, it was time to refit the gland cover, followed by the two hexagon nuts that allow the pressure to be applied to the gland flange. And I'd like to mention at this stage that it's a very fiddly job. What I had to do was modify one of my nut spinners. It's a really easy thing to do. Using my metal cutting bandsaw, I just cut a slot in the end of the nut spinner to take a screwdriver point. This allows for greater flexibility when using nut spinners in inaccessible places. For instance, the nut spinner fits on the nut, but then I can't really get my fingers in to rotate it. But with the help of the screwdriver, it's a very easy job. Time to look at the crosshead. And I have to admit that once again, the bolts are incredibly tight on all of the parts on this traction engine that I'm working on. Whoever's put this together has really over tightened everything. And my instinct tells me that it was not the original builder of the engine. I don't know what the strange hexagon part is on top of the oiler on the crosshead guide. It looks a bit like a gas jet. Finally, I managed to remove the nuts from the bolts because they were very badly sprained. And similarly, the single nut holding the other end of the guide bar to the cylinder was initially very tight. Thankfully, it did come loose, and I just ran it around with a screwdriver to get it off the thread. Then I noticed that there was a slot in the guide bar, so I didn't really need to take the nut all the way off to start with. But unfortunately, I didn't know about the slot in the guide bar until I'd actually removed the nut. In this clip, I've already removed the upper slipper from the crosshead, and it appears to me that the upper slipper was not as badly worn as the lower one, so what I'm going to do is just shim the lower slipper. Here I'm pushing it out with my screwdriver point, and what I need to do is slide in place a brass shim on top of this hole. This, by the way, is the top slipper. I didn't need to completely remove the bottom one. 
I'm just using this as a pattern to make a mark on my brass shim so I can drill a hole in it. The hole lines up OK with the hole in the slipper, so it's time to put it all back together. Once I refitted the guide bars in place, the crosshead was a really smooth fit in between the guide bars. I was a bit concerned that the crosshead would not go back onto the piston rod, but it did. Which means that the crosshead is in the middle of the guide bars and everything seems fine. The final thing to look at is the small end pin, which is a bit slack, because the bearing needs adjusting. This is done by tightening the bolt on the crosshead, which drives a wedge between the crosshead and the crosshead bearing, to take up any wear, and this needs to be set just right, not over tightened. I had to have a couple of attempts at tightening this bolt, and on the third rotation all of the play disappeared. And now when I turn the flywheel it moves the connecting rod, there isn't any play between the pin and the bearing in the crosshead. After the flywheel and the crosshead and the gland job, now the engine doesn't seem to be rattling at all. But the whistle is painful. I may try and lower the frequency of the whistle because it's very high pitched. The job seems to be going quite well so far. One of the drain cocks is broken. So out of curiosity, I had a look at the video that was shot by Simon Hudson driving this engine in the yard of the steam workshop. And apart from the engine running very sweetly, I did notice that the drain cock, which is now broken, wasn't broken. But now the very small thread at the top of the drain cock, which is 10BA, has snapped off. I have repaired that, but I didn't bother videoing it, because it was a really fiddly job, and most of it was my hand in the way. Time to oil the parts thoroughly, and run the engine for a while. To make sure it's OK, I'm going to run it really fast. While the engine's running, I thought I'd show you this part. It's where you fill the bunker tank. And just behind it is the water lifter. These are very simple things, but quite clever. This one is working fine. This is what the engine sounded like when it first arrived in the workshop. And now it sounds like this. I'm going to run it for a while to make sure nothing falls off. And I'd just like to say, as always, stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.